in the process of researching this podcast, I found some really, really, really cool stuff. And so we're talking about learning styles here. There's something that's called VARC. Uh, I've got a link to this. It's a Sphero.com article. If you want to take a look at VARC, there's a lot of different things about VARC, V-A-R-K. Uh, what it stands for is visual, auditory, <laughs> reading and writing and kinetic or kinesthetic. What this does is it takes learning and puts people into four different main groups. Now, as I was going through this, I kind of identify at certain times with each of these, but one or two may uh, stick out for you. So we're gonna, I'm going to go through this. The visual learner is someone who uh, chord charts are really important. Scale diagrams, having something there that's a visual representation of what you're going to do. Lead sheets so you can see the chords as they change, having something to see to help you with this. But an auditory learner does better from discussions, from stories. While they learn something, they read aloud or they hear how someone plays something and then they're able to imitate it. Podcasts are great for, for people who think like this. Listening to how someone phrase sounds so they can incorporate it into their own playing. The next one is the reading and writing learner. Uh, these are people who do really well with guitar books and worksheets, maybe quizzes to help them remember things, uh, presentations. Uh, these are also people who take lots of notes uh, and refer back to their notes to remember the things that they do. And then the last type of learner is the kinetic learners, kinesthetic learner. These are hands-on approach people. They learn better hands-on. They do great learning in groups, playing along with other people, uh, seeing hearing, feeling, and experiencing music and playing guitar with others. If you know that you do really well with one of those styles of learning, that is super important to incorporate into your guitar learning process. It will speed things up really, really, really fast. One of my favorite people on the internet is Jim Quick. He helps people who have a hard time committing things to memory. He has a system for speeding this up. It's called the FAST system. And the first, the F in the fast system is for forget, which is pretty cool. He's, he says, you know, this is not what you would think, but forget what you know. Approach learning differently. Approach learning with a clean slate for what you've learned. And what you've learned previously, uh, you could have done it incorrectly as well. And so that might be one of your struggles. And so if you're taking the time to learn a skill correctly, forget what you've learned in the past. Come at it fresh. Those things can get in the way. It can be a roadblock. If you come into learning something and you're curious about that, you let your curiosity shine, always ask how and why when you're learning something and you may be able to fix some old problems that have been plaguing you in the past. The next one for the FAST system is A, active. And that's instead of just doing what you're told, Take part in it. Ask a bunch of questions. Make your plans. Experiment with things that you've learned. Experiment with your new knowledge. Another way to speed up learning, the, the S in FAST is for state. Your emotions are tied to your learning. I completely agree with this. If I had to learn a song in a rush for a band, I can feel it when I go back to play it. The, the emotions are tied to your learning. And I touch on this in the practice space setup podcast. Uh, how you feel about what you're doing is going to be recorded in your brain with your new skills together. Uh, but what can you do with this? Say you're not feeling great, but you have to practice. Certain things like posture, putting a smile on your face, even if you don't feel like it, it can start to change your mood very, very quickly. Before you know it, you may have forgotten everything that you're having a problem with and get on to having a good time practicing even if it's pre-planned, it's very, very powerful. And you can also decide ahead of time that you're not gonna go into practice with a bad attitude. If you find yourself, and I have found myself in that instance several times. You can even cancel or put off your practice for a few hours if you know that your, your emotions are not in the right place. Uh, here's something that Jim said, he said, gratitude will override so many negative emotions and it will rewire your brain, awesome. So the last part of the FAST system that Jim teaches is teach. I love this one. 
Learn as if you have to teach guitar to someone else. It makes you come at it a different way, right? It changes everything. You have to organize your thoughts as you learn something because you're going to have to explain this to someone else. I'll often say to a student, teach this back to me. And then I'll pretend that I, they'll say, you know this, and I'll say, I forgot. I don't know how to play that C major chord. I forgot how to play or what to play. Usually I get a smile and a little bit of excitement because it's a challenge, right? Always follows that. Hey, thanks for watching. I've got a free gift for you today. It's my Get Moving Guitar free practice routine mini course. And you can get it by clicking the link below in the description. If you'd like to support the podcast and get more of this content that's actually designed to help you become the guitarist that you've always wanted to be, sign up for my VIP supporter program. You can get in for as little as $3 a month. You get access to the VIP podcast. I will see you soon in the next video.